Hello everyone, my name is Denise, also known as the Nerdy Book Chick. Today I will be reviewing Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Na. It is a young adult book. I do not own a physical copy of it. I borrowed it digitally. Um, there's a picture of the cover. I'm sorry it doesn't do it justice being on my phone. Uh, I don't own an e-reader. I read it on my, I have an e-reader on my phone instead. I find it a little bit more portable than an e-reader. It's smaller, although I probably should get an e-reader eventually. Um, but that's not the point. I borrowed it digitally from my library. They Most libraries also have a digital selection that you can choose from, and it's the same as every other book where like for the borrowing time and everything. There's no fees or anything like that. It's great if you use your library check out their digital library it's awesome they have a decent selection especially a lot of the newer books they get them digitally as well it's great it's awesome anywho back to the book <laughs> girls of paper and fire by natasha na it is okay so i'll just do like the back of the book description basically uh, each year eight girls are chosen to serve the king as his paper girls it is a high honor but it is also the most demeaning. Lee is chosen as the ninth this year. So in the book, it is based in a world that is a Asian inspired fantasy world. There is magic. It's very interesting and the descriptions are absolutely beautiful, especially the clothing, especially like all the Asian style, uh, the older styles like they talk about wearing hand foos and stuff like that. I literally had to Google some of the words for the clothing just so I could see what it what article of clothing they were talking about. Some of the old Asian style clothing. And it is. It's, it's gorgeous, to be honest. They're beautiful. So this book has three cases. There's the paper cased, the steel cased, and the moon cased. Paper cases are humans. Regular old people no magic per se although some can tap into the magic most people can't use it uh, steel cases look mostly like humans but they have animal characteristics like ears or a tail or the eyes maybe a little bit of fur uh, or some scaling but mostly human with animal like small animal characteristics moon cases are also called demons and they are full-on human animal. Uh, think of the movie Zootopia or Sing, where it's like a humanized animal, more like that. So like we've got the demons who are animal people and then we've got people and then the steel is a little bit of both. And of course the moon case, the demons are the high class ones. The king is a full-on uh, bull demon. The main characters are Lee and Ren and then there's some minor characters that you hear a lot about like the ladies who raised Lee and Ren or trained Lee and Ren as paper girls and then there's like Ren's dad, the king, a bunch of guards, uh, Lee's family, people who fight uh, on the side of Lee and Ren once the fighting gets started. The first book doesn't really have too much violence in it, but there's a bit. The king is very controlling and violent, so the main plot is to overcome and overthrow his regime and try and make a world that's a little bit more fair and better for everybody and try and figure out um, what is making the land sick. There is some sort of sickness in the actual world, the whole world. I feel there's good world building and descriptions, like I said before, especially the outfits. Um, this book discusses some very important topics. I feel it's not just a mindless fantasy read. It discusses some where well, there's some triggers for sure for some people, so be careful. But it discusses like feminism, assault, abuse, coping with trauma, rape, and violence. So if those are some issues for you, I wouldn't recommend. I found it a little slow paced, uh, but not too predictable. 
I feel the slow pace is because it is book one of three. Book one of three. So the first book is building up the conflict and everything. There's not too, too much action. You're trying to get to know the main characters. Uh, it's in the first person writing style. So everything is from Lee's point of view. We follow Lee around even right from the beginning. Lee is a unique character. The reason she's picked as the ninth, I, I, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but not too much because it's basically within the first chapter of the book. Um, Lee has very unique eyes. Some people in the book, the characters in the book, talk about her and say that maybe part of her, she does have some demon in her because her eyes are a very, very luminous uh, amber color. They say she's moon blessed. It's one of the reasons she's chosen as the ninth because she's so unique just in her eyes makes her makes her extra beautiful. She starts off because of this like very shy and timid and as the book goes she builds confidence and gets a little bit more bolder. There's a friends to lovers theme in this book. It's a slow burn romance. There's not very many details, there's fade to black scenes, uh, there is fight scenes, swords, and hand-to-hand -hand combat, and like I said, it does talk about rape. Uh, the girls are the king's concubines, and obviously they're there against their will. So that is one of the main themes for, but like I said, it doesn't go into <laughs> extreme detail, thank goodness. That would be traumatic for everybody. <laughs> I found the characters to be diverse, uh, lots of different characters that can be relatable to a lot of different people, which is very good. Um, I personally didn't find the book a totally relatable, but I'm also blessed with the fact that I haven't had to deal with a lot of trauma or any kind of assault or abuse or anything like that in my life. Someone else who's had to deal with those issues would definitely find the book way more relatable. <clears throat> it didn't really bring up any strong emotions with me. I'm not sure if that was the author's writing style, the fact that it was a little slow paced, or I might have just picked the book at the wrong time. I'm a mood reader and I might I wasn't really in the mood for this kind of book, but I found the storyline and the plot very interesting and I wanted to see what happens. Um, I found the end very satisfying for like a good end. How do I word that right? Totally messed that up. It was a good ending. It was satisfying for the first book, but it's definitely open to the next book in the series, which is my next, uh, my next video will be book two. I already forgot what it was called. I have to Google it. I'm sorry, everybody. The uh, second one is called Girls of Fate. No, Girls of Storm and Shadow. Girls of Storm and Shadow. Book three is Girls of Fate and Fury, which will be the video after this one. I'll do all three in a row so you can see my opinion of all three books after I finish. I'm on the third one right now. I would uh, I would rate this four stars just because I didn't really relate too much to it and I found it rather slow paced but I would recommend it to people um, especially if you've suffered from some sort of trauma in your life you would find it more relatable for sure like I said I found the main plot and storyline interesting even though um, overthrowing an evil king is something that has been done multiple times. I like the way they went about it. I've never really read books that have the heroine as one of the king's concubines. Like that's an interesting twist on it to see how things go. So I will let you know what I think about the whole series as a whole after I've read the third book. So that'll be in my next, not in the next video, but the video after that when I re review the third book. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my review. I really tried to leave out any spoilers. 
Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.